it chances in particular men that through some vicious mole of nature in them by the o'ergrowth of some complexion oft breaking down the pales and forts of reason or by some habit grown too much that these men carrying I say the stamp of one defect their virtues else be they as pure as grace shall in the general censure take corruption from that particular fault. This is the tragedy of a man who could not make up his mind. Of the king. Bernardo? He. You come most carefully upon your hour. Now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francisco. For this relief, much thanks. It is bitter cold. I am sick at heart. Have you had quiet guard? Not a mouse stirring. Well, good night. If you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. I think I hear them. Stand ho, who's there? Friends to this ground and liegemen to the day. Give me your good night. Well, farewell, honest soldier. Who has relieved you? Bernardo has my place. Give you good night. Hello, Bernardo. Say, what is Horatio there? A piece of him. <laughs> Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. Fine. Has this thing appeared again tonight? I've seen nothing. Horatio says tis but our fantasy, and will not let belief take hold of him touching this dreaded sight twice seen of us. Therefore, I've entreated him along with us to watch the minutes of this night, that if again this apparition comes, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Tosh, Tosh, twill not appear. Sit down a while. Let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story. What we two knights have seen. Well, sit we down and let us hear Bernardo speak of this. Last night of all, when yon same star that's westward from the pole had made his course into that part of heaven where now it burns, Marcellus and myself, the bell then beating one. Peace. Look when it comes again! In the same figure like the dead king, Hamlet. Thou art a scholar. Speak to it, Horatio. 
Looks it not like the king. Mark it, Horatio. Most like. It harrows me with fear and wonder. It would be spoke to. Question it, Horatio. If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If there be any good thing to be done, that may to thee do ease and grace to me, oh, speak. Is gone and will not answer. How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. Is not this something more than fantasy? What think you want? Before my God, I might not disbelieve without the sensible and true avouch of mine own eyes. Is it not like the king? As thou art to thyself. It is strange. It was about to speak when the cock crew. Then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. I've heard a cock that is the herald to the morn. Doth his lofty and shrill sounding throat awake the god of day. And at its warning, the wandering and uneasy spirit hies to its confines. Mm. Faded on the crowing of the cock. Some say that ever against that season comes wherein our Saviour's birth is celebrated, the bird of dawning singeth all night long. And then they say no spirit can walk abroad. The nights are wholesome then. No planet strike, no fairy takes, nor witch hath power to charm. So hallowed and so gracious is the time. So have I heard, and do in part believe. But look, the morn in russet mantle clad walks o'er the dew of yon high eastern hill. Break we our watch up, and by my advice, let us impart what we've seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, this spirit dumb to us. We'll speak to him. Let's do it, I pray. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Though yet of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us be fitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe, yet 
so far hath discretion fought with nature that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen. Have we as twere with a defeated joy, with mirth in funeral, and with dirge in marriage, in equal scale, weighing delight and dole, taken to wife? Nor have we herein barred your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along, for all our thanks. Ah. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is, Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes, that shall not be my offer, not thy asking? The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth, than is the throne of Denmark to thy father. What wouldst thou have, Laertes? Dread, my lord. Your leave and favor to return to France. From whence, so willingly, I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation. Yet now I must confess, that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again towards France and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. Mm. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave by laborsome petition. And at last, upon his will, I sealed my hard consent. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Take thy fair hour, Laertes. Time be thine, and thy best graces bend it at thy will. And now, our cousin Hamlet, and our son, how is it that the clouds still hang on you? Good Hamlet, Cast thy nighty color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy lowered lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest his comrade. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Ay, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with you? Seems, madam. Nay, it is, I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, together with all forms, modes, shows of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passeth show, these but the trappings and the suits of war. It is sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know, your father lost a father, that father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persist in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness, tis unmanly grief. A fault to heaven, a fault against the dead, a fault to nature, to reason, most absurd, whose common theme is death of fathers, and who still hath cried from the first corpse till he that died today. This must be so. Why should we, in our peevish opposition, take it to heart? <laughs> we pray you throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father. For let the world take note. You are the most immediate to our throne. And with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart towards you. If you are intent in going back to school at Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire, and we beseech you, bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest courtier cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. 
I shall in all my best obey you, ma'am. Why, it is a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. In grace whereof no jocund health that Denmark drinks today. But the great cannons to the clouds shall tell. And the kings carouse, the heavens shall roar again. We speaking earthly thunder. Come, away. that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw and resolve itself into a dew, or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against so slaughter. O oh God, God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. It is an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this. But two months dead. Nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a king that was to this Hyperion to a satyr. So loving to my mother that he might not suffer the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth, must I remember? Why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet within a month, let me not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman. A little month, or ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body, like Niobe, all tears. Why she? Even she. O oh God, a beast that once discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle. My father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month, she married. O oh, most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheep. It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. My necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet and the trifling of his favor. Hold it a fashion and a toy and blood. A violet in the youth of primy nature. Forward, not permanent. Sweet, not lasting. The perfume and suppliance of a minute. No more. No more, but so. Think it no more. Perhaps he loves you now. But you must fear his greatness weighed, his will is not his own. For he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, 
carve for himself. For on his choice depends the safety and the health of this whole state. Then weigh what loss your honor may sustain if with to willing ear you list his songs, or lose your heart, or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity. Be wary then. Best safety lies in fear. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But good, my brother, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst, like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and minds not his own creed. Oh, fear me not. But here my father comes, I stay too long. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard, for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory look thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought is act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, Grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel, but do not dull thy part with entertainment of each new hatched, unfledged come. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, bear that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Cost thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy. Rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. For loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self, be true, and it must follow, as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing season this it be. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. The time invites you, go. Farewell, Ophelia. And remember well what I have said to you. It is in my memory lost, and you yourself shall keep it here. Farewell. What is to feel here he hath said to you? So please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Mary, well be thought. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord, of late, made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Pooh! You speak like a green girl, and shift it in such perilous circumstances. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord. What are you? Mary, I will teach you. Think yourself a baby. I would not in plain terms from this time forth have you give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. Come your ways. Hail to your lordship. I'm glad to see you well. For I sure I do forget myself. I say, my lord, and your poor servant there. Sir, my good friend, I'll change that name with you. Marcella. My good lord. I'm very glad to see you. Good evening, sir. Mm -hmm. But what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray you do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Thrift. Thrift, Horatio. 
The funeral of baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage table. Would I had met my dearest foe in heaven, or ever I had seen that day, Horatio. My father. Methinks I see my father. Oh, where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all, I shall not look upon his life again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw? Who? My lord, the king, your father. The king? My father? Two nights together had these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch. And the dead vast in the middle of the night they thus encountered. A figure like your father, armed, appears before them. And with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. This to me in dread and secrecy did they impart. And I with them the third night kept the watch. Where, as they had reported, both in time, form of the thing, each word made true and good, the apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. But where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Did you not speak to him? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. Yet once methought it lifted up its head as it would speak. But even then the morning cock crew loud, and at the sound it shrunk in haste away and vanished from our sight. It is very strange. But I do live, my honoured lord, it is true. And we did think it writ down in our duty to let you know. Indeed, indeed, sirs. This troubles me. Told you the watch tonight? I do, my lord. Armed, say you. Armed, my lord. From top to toe? My lord, from head to foot. Then you saw not his face? Oh, yes, my lord. He wore his visor up. What looked he? Frowningly? A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. And fixed his eyes upon you? Most constantly. I would I had been there. It would have much amazed you. Very like, very like. Stayed it long? While one with moderate haste might tell a hundred. Longer. Longer. Not when I saw. His beard was grizzled, no? It was as I've seen it in his life. A sable silver. I will watch tonight, perchance will walk again. I warrant it will. I pray you all, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, and whatsoever else shall hap tonight, give it an understanding, but no tongue. I will requite your love, so fare you well. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. I'll do you. Your well. love's as mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit in arms. All is not well. I doubt some foul play. Would the night were come. Then sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth go from them to men's eyes. Quite shrewdly. It is very cold. It is a nipping and an eager air. What hour now? I think it lacks of twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed. I heard it not. Then draws near the season wherein the spirit has his wont to walk. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and makes carouse, keeps wassail and the swaggering upspring reels, 
And as he drains his drafts of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it a custom? Aye, <laughs> very ill. But to my mind, though I am native here and to the manner born, it is a custom more honored in the breach than the observance. This heavy-headed revel, east and west, makes us traduced and mocked by other nations. They call us drunkards. And with swinish phrase, soil our reputation. And indeed, it takes from our achievements, though performed at height. So oft it chances in particular men that for some vicious mole of nature in them, by the o'ergrowth of some complexion, oft breaking down the pales and forts of reason, or by some habit grown too much, that these men, carrying, I say, the stamp of one defect, their virtues else be they as pure as grace, shall in the general censure take corruption from that particular fault. Angels are ministers of grace to fear us. Look, my lord, it comes! Be thou a spirit of health, or goblin damned? Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet. King. Father. Royal Dane, oh, answer me. It beckons you to go away with it. It waves you to a more removed ground. But do not go with it. No, by no means. It will not speak. Then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why, what should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee, and for my soul, what can it do to that, being a thing immortal as itself? It waves me forth again. I'll follow it. What do it tempt you toward the flood, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff that beetles o'er his base into the sea, and there assume some other horrible form which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness? Think of it! You shall not go, my lord! Hold up your hands! Be ruled, you shall not go! My fate cries out and makes each petty artery in this body as hard against the Nemean lion's nerve! Still am I called, and hand we gentlemen! By heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that hinders me! I say away! Go on. I'll follow thee.
avenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul as in the best it is. But this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Haste me to know it, that I with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love may sweep to my revenge. Now, Hamlet, here. Tis given out that sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me. So the whole year of Denmark is by a forged process of my death frankly abused. But know thou, noble youth, the servant that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. My prophetic soul, my uncle. I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with traitorous gifts, won to his shameful lust the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there, but soft. Methinks I sent the morning air, brief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always in the afternoon, upon my quiet hour thy uncle stole, with juice of cursed hemlock in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous disturbance, whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man, that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body. Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched, cut off, even in the blossoms of my sin, no reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible. Horrible. Most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven. Fare thee well at once. The glowworm shows the madden to be near, and begins to pale his uneffectual fire. Adieu. 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 Remember me. of heaven. O oh, earth, what else? What shall I couple hell? Hold, hold my heart. Remember thee. Hi, thou poor ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee? Yea, from the table of my memory I'll wipe away all trivial fond records that youth and observation copied there, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter! Yes, by heaven! Most pernicious woman. Oh, villain! Villain, 
smiling, damned villain. So, uncle, there you are. Now to my work. It is adieu, adieu. Remember me. I have sworn it. So be it. Hello! My lord! Hello! Oh, oh, boy! Come, sir! Come! How is my noble lord? What news, my oh, lord? Oh, wonderful! Good, my lord, tell it. No. You will reveal it. Not I, my lord. How see you then? What heart of man once think it? But you'll be secret. Aye, my, my lord. There's ne'er a villain dwelling in all Denmark. But he's an errant knave. There needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. Why, right. You are in the right. And so, without more circumstance at all, I hold it fit that we shake hands and part. You as your business and desire shall point you, for every man hath business and desire, such as it is. And for mine own poor part, look you, I go pray. These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you heartily. Yes, faith, heartily. There's no offense, my lord. Yes, by St. Patrick, but there is always your much offense, too. Touching this vision here, it is an honest ghost that let me tell you. For your desire to know what is between us, oh, master it as you may. And now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars and soldiers, give me one poor request. What is, my lord, we will? Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, we will not. Never, my lord. swear it. In faith, my lord. Not, not I, my lord, in faith. Upon my sword. You have sworn, my lord, already. Indeed, upon my sword, indeed. Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, never, so help you mercy. How strange or odd, so ere I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think fit to put an antic disposition on that you, at such time, seeing me, never shall, by the pronouncing of some doubtful phrases, well, well, we know, or we could, and if we would, or such ambiguous giving out, denote that you know aught of me. This to swear, so grace and mercy at your best need help you. Swear. Rest. Rest, perturbed. So, gentlemen, with all my love, I do commend me to you. And what so poor a man as Hamlet is may do to express his love and friending to you, God willing, shall not lack. Go in and still your fingers on your lips, I pray. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spice that ever I was born to set it right. Come, let's go together. As I was sewing in my closet. Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all unlaced, pale as his shirt, and with a look so piteous in purport, as if he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm. And with his other hand thus, o'er his brow, he falls to such perusal of my face as he would draw it. Long stayed he so. At last, a little shaking of mine arm, and 
and thrice his head thus waving up and down. He raised a sigh, so piteous and profound, as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he let me go, and with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes. For out of doors he went without their help. And to the last, then did their light on me. My liege and madam, to expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night, night, and time is time, were nothing but to waste night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad, call I it, for to define true madness, what is but to be nothing else but mad? More matter with less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all. And that he is mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity. And pity tis, tis true. In a foolish figure, but farewell it, for I will use no art. Thus it remains. And the remainder thus. But then, I have a daughter. Have while she is mine, who in her duty and obedience, Mark hath given me this. Now gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. It's an ill phrase, a vile phrase. A beautified is a vile phrase, but you shall hear thus. In her excellent white bosom, uh, these etc. Came this from Hamlet to her? Good madam, stay a while, I will be fit. Doubt thou the stars are fire, doubt that the sun doth move, doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. O oh, dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers, I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best, O oh, most best, believe it, had you Thine evermore, most dear lady, while this frame is to him, Hamlet. This in obedience hath my daughter shown me, and more above hath his solicitings, as they set out by time, by means, and place, all given to mine ear. But how hath she received his love? What do you think of me? As of a man faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. But what might you think when I had seen this hot love on the wing? If I had looked upon this love with idle sight, what might you think? No, I went round to work, and my young mistress thus I did bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince. Out of thy star, this must not be. And then I prescripts gave her that she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens. And he, repulsive, a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, then into a past, thence to a watch, thence to a weakness, thence into a lightness, and by this declension into that madness wherein now he raves and all we mourn. You think tis this? It may be. Very likely. If there been such a time, I'd fain know that, that I have positively said tis so that it proved otherwise? Not that I know. Take this from this, if this be otherwise. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks for hours together here in the lobby. So he does, indeed. At such a time, I lose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind an arras then. Mark the encounter. If he loves her not, and be not from his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistant for a state, but keep a farm and cart. We will try it. But look where sadly the poor wretch comes reeling. Ah. 
Away, I do beseech you both, away. I'll board him presently. Oh, give me leave. How does my good Lord Henley? Well, God of mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent well. You are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord? Aye, sir. To be honest as this world goes is to be one man picked out of 10,000. It's very true, my lord. Or if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog. You have a daughter. I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing, but as your daughter may conceive, friend, look to it. How say you by that, still harping on my daughter? Yet he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger. He's far gone, far gone. That I will speak to him again. What do you read, my lord? Words, words, words. What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean the matter that you read, my lord. Slanders. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have grey beards, that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum, that they have a plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hands. All of which, sir, though I most powerfully believe, yet I hold it not honesty to have it thus set down. For you yourself, sir, shall be old as I am, if like a crab you could go backward. Now, though this be madness, yet there's meth again. Will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave? Indeed, it is out of the air. How pregnant sometimes his replies are. My honourable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with all. Except my life. Except my life. Except my life. Read on this book. That sure such an exercise may color your loneliness. Gracious, so please you, we'll bestow ourselves. Ophelia, walk you here. Let's withdraw, my lord. Loved you now, the fair of you.
Nim? In thy orisons be all my sins remembered. Good, my lord. How does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well? Well? My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did. And with them words of so sweet breath composed it made things more rich. Their perfume lost, take these again. For to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Are you honest? My lord. I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud. Revengeful. Ambitious. More offenses at my back than I have thoughts to put them in. Imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do crawling between heaven and earth? We are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where's your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell! Oh, help me, you sweet heaven! <laughs> I have heard of your paintings through one another. God hath given you one face and you make yourselves another. You jig, you amble, you lisp, you nickname God's creatures and make your wantonness your ignorance. Get thee to a nunnery and quickly too, farewell! Or if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool, for wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. Go to, I know more of it! <laughs> It has made me mad. I say we will have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall stay as they are. <laughs> to a nunnery. Love, his affections do not that way tend, nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. Something in his soul, for which his melancholy sits on brood. And I do fear the unheeded consequence will be some danger. For which to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. He shall with speed to England. Haply the seas and countries different with variable objects shall expel this something settled matter in his heart. What think you, aunt? It shall do well, but yet I do believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. How now, Ophelia? You need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard. My lord, do as you please. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. <laughs>
Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished to die, to sleep, to sleep. A chance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love. the law's delays, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietest make with a bare bodkin. Who would Fardel's bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dread of something after death the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the world and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pith and moment, with this regard their currents turn awry. And lose the name of action. to tell you. The actors have come hither, my lord. He that plays the king shall be welcome. The best actors in the world, either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, Pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral. 
Seneca cannot be too heavy, nor Plotus too light, for these are the only men. You are welcome, Master. Welcome all. I am glad to see thee well. <laughs> welcome, good friend. Oh, my old friend. Why, thy face is balanced since I saw thee last. Comest thou to beard me in Denmark? <laughs> <laughs> what, my young lady and mistress? By our lady, your ladyship is nearer to heaven than when I saw you last. Pray God your voice, like a piece of uncurrent gold, be not cracked in its ring. <laughs> Masters, you are all welcome. Good, my lord. Will you see the players well bestowed? You here, let them be well used, for they are the abstract and brief chronicles of the time. After your death, you had better have a bad epitaph than their ill report while you live. My lord, I will use them according to their desert. God's body can man much better. Use every man after his desert, and who shall escape whipping? Use them after your own honor and dignity. The less they deserve, the more merit is in your bounty. Take them in. Come, sirs. Follow him, friends. We'll hear a play tomorrow. <laughs> Just hear me, old friend. Can you play The Murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. We'll have it tomorrow night. You could, for a need, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines that I would set down and insert in it, could you not? Aye, my lord. Very well. Follow that law. And look, you mock him now. <laughs> Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of your players do, I had as lief the town crier spoke my line. No, do not uh, saw the air too much with your hand thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrents, tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious, periwig-pated fellow tear a passion to tatters, to split the ears of the groundlings, who for the most part are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. I would have such a fellow whipped. Without Herod's Herod's, pray you avoid it. I warrant your honor. Be not too tame, neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action with this special observance, that you o'erstep not the modesty of nature. For anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing, whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold as twere the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, and the very age and body of the time, his form and pressure. Now this, overdone, though it make the unskillful laugh, cannot but make the judicious grieve, the censure of which one must, in your allowance, outweigh a whole theater of others. Oh, there be players that I have seen play and heard others praise, and that highly, not to speak it profanely, that having neither the accent of Christian, nor the gait of pagan, Christian, nor man, have so strutted and bellowed that I have thought the sum of nature's journeymen had made men and not made them well. They imitated humanity so abominable. I hope we have reformed that indifferently with us. Oh, reform it altogether? And let those that play your clown speak no more than is set down for them. For there be of them that will themselves laugh to set on some barren quantity of spectators to laugh to, though in the meantime some necessary question of the play be then to be considered. That's villainous! And shows the most pitiful ambition in the fool that uses it.
Go make it ready. And now, my lord, will the king hear this piece of work? And the queen too, and that presently. Bid the players make haste. Aye, right, my lord. Horatio. Dear sweet lord at your service. Observe, my uncle, give him heedful note. Well, my lord, they are coming to the play. I must be idle. Get you a place. Excellent faith of the chameleon's dish. I eat the air, promise cram. You cannot feed capon so. I have nothing but this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. My lord, you played once at the university, you said. There did I, my lord, and was accounted a good actor. What did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. I was killed in the capital. Brutus killed me. It was a brute part of him to kill so capital a calf there. <laughs> Be the players ready? Aye, my lord. They stay upon your patience. Come hither, my dear Hamlet. Sit by me. No, good mother. Here's metal more attractive. Oh, did you mark that? Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. I my lord. You think I meant country matter? I think nothing, my lord. That's a fair thought to lie between maids' legs. What is, my lord? Nothing. You are merry, my lord. Who, oh, I? I, my lord. Oh, God, you're only jig maker. Why, what should a man do but be merry? For look you, how merrily my mother looks, and my father died within two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. So long. Nay, then, let the devil wear black, for I'll have a suit of sables. Oh, heaven. Died two months ago and not forgotten yet. Why, then, the sober great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. For us and for our tragedy, here stooping for your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. Is this a prologue or the posy of a ring? It is brief, my lord. As woman's love. You are keen, my lord, you are keen. It will cost you a groaning to take off my edge.
Upon the act of the poison. I did very well, no. God bless you, sir. Oh, good, my lord, I've saved me a word with sir, you. Sir, a whole history. The king's. I saw what of him? He's in his retirement, marvelous distemper. With drink, sir? No, my lord, rather with choler. Your wisdom should show itself more richer to signify this to the doctor, for for me to put him to his purgation would perhaps plunge him into far more choler. Good, my lord, put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. I am tame, sir, pronounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, has sent me to you. You are welcome. Nay, my lord, this courtesy is not of the right breed. If it should please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the end of my business. Sir, I cannot. What, my lord? Make you a wholesome answer. My wit's disease. But, sir, such answer as I can make, you shall command. Or rather, as you say, my mother. Therefore, no more. But to the matter, my mother, you say. She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. We shall obey, were she ten times our mother. Have you any further trade with us? My lord, the queen will speak with you, and presently. Do you see yonder cloud that's almost in shape of a camel? By the mess, and it's like a camel indeed. He thinks it's like a weasel. It is backed like a weasel. Or like a whale. Very like a whale. Then I will come to my mother by and by. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Leave me, friend. It is now the very witching time of night. 
when churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. How could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on? Lord, now to my mother. O oh heart, lose not thy nature. Let not ever the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. My lord, he's going to his mother's closet. Behind the arras, I'll conceal myself to hear the process. I'll warrant she'll text him home, and as you said, I... and wisely was it said, tis meet that some more audience than a mother, since nature makes them partial, should or hear the speech of bondage. Fare you well, my liege, I'll call upon you ere you go to bed and tell you what I know. Thanks, dear my lord. Over my offense is rank. It smells to heaven. It hath the primal elder's curse upon it. A brother's murder. Pray, can I not, though inclination be as sharp as will? What if this cursed head were thicker than itself with brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet hymns to wash it white as snow? Oh, what form of prayer could serve my turn? Give me my foul murder that cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder, my crown my own ambition, and my queen. Oh, wretched state. Oh, bosom black as death. Help, angels. All may yet be well. I do it bad. Now he's prey. And now I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven. And so am I revenged. That would be thought on. A villain kills my father, and for that I, his sole son, do this same villain send to heaven. For this is hire and salary, not revenge. He took my father, all his crimes full blown, as flush as me. And how his audit stands, who knows, save heaven? But in our circumstance and course of thought, it is heavy with him. And am I then revenged to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for his passage? No. Up, sword, and know thou a more dark intent when he is drunk, asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, at gaming, swearing, or about some act that has no relish of salvation in it. Then trip him that his heels may kick at heaven, and that his soul may be as damned and black as hell where to it goes. My mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sickly day. My words fly up. My thoughts remain below. 
Words without thoughts never to heaven go. He will come straight. Look, you lay hold to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with, and that your grace has screened and stood between much heat and him. I'll silence me in here. Pray you be round with him. Mother. 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 I'll warrant you fear me not. Withdraw, I hear him coming. Now, Mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. How now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgotten? No, by the rule, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. And would it were not so, you are my mother. Nay, then I'll set those to you that can Come, be. come and sit you down, you shall not budge! <laughs> You go not till I set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. Thou wilt not murder me. Help! 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 Is it the king? Oh, what a rash and bloody deed is this. A bloody deed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. Kill a king? I laid it. It was my word. A wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Take thy fortune. Thou find'st to be too busy is some danger. <laughs> Leave ringing of the hands. He sit you down and let it ring your heart, for so I shall if it be made of penitent or stuff. What have I done that thou darest wag thy tongue and noise for rude against Such me? Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty, calls virtue hypocrite, takes off the rose from the fair forehead of an innocent love and sets a blister there, and makes marriage vows as false as dice as old. Me what heck? Look here upon this picture and on this. The counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on this brow. An eye like Mars to threaten and command. A statue like the herald Mercury, new lighted on a heaven-kissing hill. A combination and a form indeed, where every god did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband, like a mildewed ear, blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? You cannot call it love, for at your age the heyday and the blood is tame. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? What devil was that thus hath hoodwinked you? Oh, shame, where is thy blush? If hell can rise up in a matron's bones to flaming youth, let virtue be as well. Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. Thou turnest mine eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and grain it Thoughts as will not lose their stain. Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of a lascivious bed, stewed in corruption, <laughs> hurrying and making love over the nasty oh, sky. to me no more. These words like daggers enter in mine ears no more, sweet Hamlet. A murderer and a villain, a slave that is not twentieth part the worth of your true lord, a cutpurse of the empire and the throne that from a shelf the precious diadem stole and put it in his no pocket. More. A king of sleds and passes. Save me and hover over me with 
with your wings, your heavenly gods. What would your gracious figure? Alas, he's mad. Do you not come, your tardy son, to chide? That lapsed in time and passion, let's go by the important acting of your dread command. Oh, say, do not forget. This visitation is but to whet thy almost blunted purpose. on thy mother sits, who step between her and her fighting soul. Speak to her, Hamlet. How is it with you, lady? Alas, how is it with you, that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporeal air do hold discourse? O oh, gentle son, upon the heat and flame of thy distemper sprinkle cool patience. Whereon do you look? On him, on him, look you how pale he glares. His form and cause conjoined preaching to stones would make them sensitive. Do not look upon me, lest with this piteous action you convert my stern intents. So I shed tears, not blood. To whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? No, nothing at all. Yet all there is, I see. Nor do you nothing here? No, nothing but ourselves. Why, look you there. Look where it steals away. My father in his heritage as he lived. Look where he goes, even now, out at the portal. This is the very coinage of your brain. This bodiless creation madness is very cunning in. Madness? My pulse as yours doth temperately keep time and makes us healthful music. Mother, for love of grace, lay not that flattering unction to your soul that not your trespass, but my madness speaks. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past. Avoid what is to come. And do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. <laughs> Forgive me this, my virtue. Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. No. Throw away the worser part of it, and live the purer with the other half. <laughs> Good night. But... Go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. Refrain tonight, and that shall lend a kind of easiness to the next abstinence, the next more easy. For use can almost change the stamp of nature. Once more, good night. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. I must be cruel, only to be kind. I must to England, you know that? Alack, I had forgot. It is so concluded on. There's letters sealed. This man shall send me packing. I lug the guts into the neighbor room.
Indeed, this counselor is now most still, most secret, and most grave. That was in life a foolish, prating knave. Come, sir. The draw toward an end with you. Good night, mother. Now, Hamlet, where's Polonius? At supper. At supper? Mm. Where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are even at him. Your worm is your only emperor for diet. We fat all creatures else to fat us, and we fat ourselves for worms. Your fat king and your lean beggar is but variable service. Two dishes, but to one table. That's the end. Alas, alas. A man may fish with the worm that hath eat of a king, and eat of the fish that hath fed of that worm. What dost thou mean by this? Nothing. But to show you how a king may go a progress through the guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? In heaven. Send thither to see. If your messenger find him not there, seek him at the other place yourself. But indeed, if you find him not within this month, you shall nose him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Go, seek him there. He will stay till you come. Hamlet, for thine especial safety, which we do tender, as we do deeply grieve for that which thou hast done, this deed must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore, prepare thyself. The bark is ready, the wind sets fair, and everything is bent for England. For England? Aye, Hamlet. Good. Thou is, if thou knewst our purposes. I see a cherub that sees them. But come, for England. Farewell, dear mother. My loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so. My mother. Come. For England. Follow him close. Tempt him with speed or delay it not. I'll have him hence tonight. Away. Everything is sealed and done. The else leans on the affair. Pray you, make haste. My love, thou holdst at all, thou mayst not coldly treat our sovereign order, which imports at full the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England, for like the fever in my blood he rages, and thou must cure me. Till I know it is done, how will my haps, my joys, when they are begun? the beauteous majesty of Denmark? Why, how now, Ophelia? 
Seyu? Nay, pray you, ma. He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. At his head a grass green turf. At his heels a stone. Nay, but a failure. Pray you mock. White his shroud as the mountain snow. Blood Alas, look here, my lord. Which bewept to the grave did go. With true love's shout. How do you, pretty lady? Well, God heal you. <laughs> they say the owl was a baker's daughter. <laughs> oh. Lord, we know what we are, but know not what we may be. God be at your table. Distraction for our father. I hope all will be well. We must be patient. But I cannot choose but weep. To think they should lay him in the cold ground. My brother shall know of it. And so I thank you for your good counsel. Come, my coach. Good night, ladies. Sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. Follow her close. Give her good watch, I pray you. Oh, Gertrude, Gertrude, when sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. First, a father slain, next, our son gone, the people muddied, thick and unwholesome in their thoughts and whispers. Poor Ophelia, divided from herself, an unfair judge. Last, and more dangerous than all of these, a brother is in secret come from France and wants not buzzers to infect his ear with pestilent speeches of his father's death. And he himself not hesitates to threaten our own person. Oh, my dear Gertrude, this like to a murdering piece in many places, gives me superfluous death. How now? What news? <laughs> Letters, my lord, from Hamlet. From Hamlet? This to your majesty. This to the queen. Who brought them? The sailors, my lord, they say. Leave us.
God bless you, sir. Let him bless thee, too. He shall, sir, and it please him. There's a letter for you, sir. It comes from the ambassador that was bound for England. The name be Horatio, as I am led to know it is. Horatio. Ere we were two days old at sea, a pirate, a very warlike appointment, gave us chase. Finding ourselves too slow of sail, we put on a compelled valor. And in the grapple, I boarded them. On the instant, they got clear of our ship. So I alone became their prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy, but they knew what they did. I am to do a good turn for them. Repair thou to me with as much speed as thou wouldst fly death. These good fellows will bring thee where I am. Farewell. He that thou knowest thy. Amen. She before you come, baby, who promised me to wed the woman I thought my love. Come, that you may direct me to him from whom you brought this. Okay, I thought we'd jump and win. To hell, a legion spouse to the blackest pit. I dare damnation. Only I'll be revenged most truly for my father. Oh, dear, if you desire to know the certainty of your dear father's death, is it written in your revenge that Spook's take will draw both friend and foe, winner and loser? None but his enemies. You know them, then. To his good friends, thus why? I'll open my arm. Why, now you speak like a good child and a true gentleman. But I am guiltless of your father's death and am most sensibly in grief for it. It shall appear as clearly to your judgment as day doth to your eyes. You must sing. Oh, now what noise is this? Kind sister, sweet Ophelia. Did the false steward that stole his master's daughter? Oh, he dry up my brains. Oh, Rose of May. Oh, heavens, is possible a young maid's wit should be as mortal as an old man's life? By heaven, thy madness shall be paid by weight. Till our scale turn the beam. Very well, my dear. There's rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray you, love. Remember. There is pendant. That's for thought. There's panel for you and Columbine. There's room for you. And here's some for me. We may call it Herbal Grace or Sunday. Oh, you must wear your rule with a difference. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. They say he made a good end. For oh, Bonnie's before when you go on, my dear. You see this, oh God. And will he not come again? And will he not come again? No, no, he is dead. Go to thy deathbed. He never come again.
and the more Christian souls I pray God. God be with you. There is a willow grows a slant of brook that shows his four leaves in the glassy stream. There with fantastic garlands did she come of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples. There on the pendant boughs, her coronet weeds clambering to hang, an envious sliver broke. When down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook, her clothes spread wide, and murmured like a while, and they bore her up. that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. Alas, then she has drowned. 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 When I did love, did love, me thought it was very sweet to contract, oh, the time for, oh, my behold, me thought there was nothing me. But age with his stealing steps had Lord, me in his clutch. Whose grave's this, sir? Mine, sir. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. You lie, I don't, sir, therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in, and yet it is mine. Let us lie in to be in and say it is thine. It is the dead, not the quick. Therefore thou liest. It is a quick lie, sir, to away again from me to you. What man dost thou dig it for? A no man, sir. Or what woman, then? But none neither. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. How absolute the knave is. We must speak by the card or equivocation will undo it. How long hast thou been grave maker? Of all the days in the year, I came to it that day that our last King Hamlet all came fought in brass. How long is that, sir? Cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. It was the very day that young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and sent into England. Aye, mad. Why was he sent into England? Why? Because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there. But if he do not do, no great matter there. Why? It shall not be seen in him there. There the men are as mad as he. How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, in by losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark. How long will a man lie in the earth there he rots? In faith, if he be not rotten before he die, he will last some eight year, nine year. A tanner will last you nine year. 
Why he more than another? Why, sir? His hide is so tanned with his trade. Will keep out water a great while. And your water's a sordid decayer of your awesome dead body. Here. Here's a skull now. This skull hath lain in the earth three and twenty year. Whose was it? Horse and mad fellows it was. Who do you think it was? <laughs> I don't know. A pestilence on him for our mad rogue. <laughs> He poured a flag and a rainish on me head once. This same skull, sir, was Yorick's skull, the king's jester. This. In that. Let me see. The last point, darling. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest. Of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your song, your gamble, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chop-fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber. Tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. What's up? The king, the queen, the courtier. Who is this they follow? And with such meager right. This doth betoken the corpse they follow did with desperate hand take its own life. <sighs> Mark. What ceremony else? That is Laertes, a very noble youth. Mark. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranty. Her death was doubtful, and but that great command or sways the order, she should in ground unsanctified have lodged till the last trumpet. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead to sing a requiem and such rest to her as to peace parted souls. Lay her in the earth. And from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violence spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. Fair Ophelia. Sweets to the sweet. Farewell. I hope thou shouldst have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid, and not have strewed thy grave. Oh, treble woe, fall ten times treble on that cursed head. Whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while till I have caught her once more in my arm. Huh? Now pile your dust upon yes. the quick and dead, till of this flat a mountain you have made. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? This is I, Hamlet the Dane. Devil, take thy soul. Thou face not well. I'm ready to take my fingers to my throat. Hold off my hand. Dr. Mosander. Let the Lord be quiet. Why ever fighteth him upon this theme until my eyelids will run the way? Oh, my son, what theme? I love to feel it. Forty thousand brothers to drop with all their quantity of love make up my son. What wilt thou do for her? He's mad, Laertes. Yeah. Soon, show me what thou wilt do. 
Would weep, would fight, would fast, would tear thyself, would drink up poison, eat a crocodile, I'll do it. Dost thou come here to whine, to outface me with leaping in her grave? Be very quick with her, and so will I. Or if thou pray to mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us. Nay, and thou mouth, I'll rant as well as thou. This is mere madness. And thus a while the fit will work in him. Anon, as patient as the female dove, his silence will sit droop. Hear you, sir. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever. But it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew. And dog will have his day. I pray you, good Horatio, wait upon him. Good Gertrude, set some watch for your son. I must commune with your grief, or you deny me right. And you must put me in your heart for friend. Where the offense is, let the great axe fall. Hmm? It shall be so. But tell me why you have proceeded not against him. Oh, for two special reasons which may to you seem much unsinued. Yet to me, they're strong. The queen, his mother lives almost by his looks. For myself, my virtue or my plague, be it either way, is she so conjunctive to my life and soul that as the star moves not but in his sphere, I could not but by her. The other motive is the great love the general people bear him, who, dipping all his faults in their affections, convert his sins to graces. And so have I, a noble father lost, a sister driven to a desperate end, whose worth, if praises may go back again, stood challenger on mount of all the age for her perfections. But my revenge will come. Break not your sleeps for that. You must not think that we are made of stuff so flat and dull that we can let our beard be shook with danger and think it pastime. As he be now returned, I'll work him to an exploit now ripe in my device, under the which he shall not choose but fall. And for his death, no wind of blame shall breathe, and even his mother shall uncharge the practice and call it accident. My lord, I will be ruled more willingly if you devise it, sir, that I might be the instrument. It falls right. You have been talked of since your travel much, and that in Hamlet's hearing, for a quality wherein they say you shine. Two months since, here was a gentleman of Normandy, he made confession of you and gave you such a masterly report for art and exercise in your defense, and for your rapier most especially, that he cried out would be a sight indeed if one could match you. Sir, this report of his did Hamlet so envenom with his envy that he could nothing do but beg and wish your sudden coming or to fence with him. Now, out of this, What out of this, my lord? Laertes, was your father dear to you? Or are you like the painting of the sorrow, a face without a heart? Why well, ask you this? That we would do, we should do, and we would. For this wood changes, at abatements and delays, as many as there are words, the thoughts, accidents. And then this should is like a spendthrift sigh. But to the quick of the altar. 
We'll put on those shall praise your excellence, bring you each short together, and wager on your heads. Hamlet, being guileless, will not peruse the sword, so that with ease or with a little shuffling, you may choose a sword unbated, and in a pass of practice, requite him for your father. I will do it. And for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mountebank, so mortal, that if I dip a knife in it, where it won't fly, no medicine so rare can save the thing from death, that is but scratched with oil. If this should fail, soft, let me see. You'll make a solemn wager on your cunning. When in the action you are hot and dry, and that he calls for drink, I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce, whereon but sipping. If he perchance escape your venomed point, our purpose may hold there. Thou art e'en as just a man as e'er my conversation coped with all. Oh, my dear lord. <laughs> Nay, do not think I flatter. For thou hast been as one in suffering all that suffers nothing. A man that fortunes, buffets, and rewards has ta'en with equal thanks. And blessed are those whose blood and judgment are so well commingled that they are not a pipe for fortune's finger to sound what stop she please. Give me that man that is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core. I in my heart of hearts, as I do thee. Something too much of this. But I'm very sorry, good Horatio, that to Laertes I forgot myself. For by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. I court his favors. But sure, the bravery of his grief did put me into a towering passion. Peace, who comes here? Ah, your lordship is right welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Dost know this waterfly? No, my good lord. Thy state is the more gracious. Uh, sweet lord, if your lordship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. You shall receive it, sir, with all diligence of spirit. Put your bonnet to his right use, tis for the head. I thank you, Lordship, tis very hot. No, believe me, it is very cold. The wind is northern. It is indifferent, cold, my lord, indeed. And yet, methinks, tis very sultry and hot for my complexion. Exceedingly, my lord, it's very sultry, as twere. Well. <laughs> I cannot tell how. But, my lord, his majesty bade me signify to you that he has laid a great wager on your head. Sir, and this is the matter. I beseech you, remember. Oh, nay, good, my lord, for my knees in good faith. Sir, here is newly come to court Laertes, who will he be an absolute gentleman, full of the most excellent differences of very soft society and great showing. Indeed, to speak feelingly of him, here is the card or calendar of gentry. Concerning, say, sir, why do we wrap the gentleman in our more rarer breath? Sir? Is it not possible to understand in another tongue? You'll do better, sir, really. What imports the nomination of this gentleman? Of Laertes. Of him, sir. I know you are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. I mean, sir, for his weapon. What is his weapon? Rapier and dagger. That's two of his weapons, but what? The king, sir, hath waged with him six Barbary horses, against the which he has imported, as I take it, six French rapiers and poniards, with their assigned as girdle, hanger, and so. Uh, three of the carriages of faith are very dear to fancy, very responsive to the hilts, most delicate carriages, and of very liberal design. What call you the carriages? Well, carriages, sir, are the um, hangouts. The phrase would be more germane to the matter if we could carry a cannon by our side, that would it might be hangers till then, but uh, The king, sir, hath laid, sir, that in a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed you three hits. He hath laid on twelve for nine. And it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. How if I answer no? I mean, my lord, the opposition of your person in trial.
Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it please his majesty, it is the breathing time of day with me. Let the swords be brought. The gentleman willing and the king hold his purpose, I will win for him if I can. If not, I shall gain nothing but my shame and the odd hits. Uh, shall I uh, re-deliver you, even so? To this effect, sir, after what flourish your nature will. <laughs> I commend my duty to your lot. Your? <laughs> your? <laughs> your. <laughs> <laughs> You will lose this wager, my lord. I do not think so. Since he went into France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. Thou wouldst not think how ill all's here about my heart. But it is no matter. Nay, good, my lord. It is but foolery. But it is just such a kind of misgiving as would perhaps trouble a woman. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. I'll forestall their coming here and say you're not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There is special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. There's a divinity that shapes our end. Rough hew them how we will. Let be. Give me your pardon, sir. I've done you wrong. But pardon it as you are a gentleman. This presence knows, and you must needs have heard how I am punished with a sore distraction. What I have done that might your nature, honor, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim was madness. Was Hamlet wrongly at you? Never Hamlet. If Hamlet from himself be taken away, and when he's not himself does wrongly at you, then Hamlet does it not. Hamlet denies it. Who does it then? His madness. If be so, Hamlet is of the faction that is wrong. His madness is poor Hamlet's enemy. Sir, in this audience, let my disclaiming from a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot my arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. <laughs> Give us the foils, come on. Ha! I'll be your foil, Laertes. In my ignorance, your skills shall, like a star in the darkest night, shine fiery indeed. You mock me, sir. No, by the time. Give them the foils, young Oswick. As in Hamlet, you will have the way down. Very well, my lord. Your grace has laid the odds of the week aside. I do not fear it. I've seen you both. Since he is better, we have therefore odds. This is too heavy. Let me see another. This likes me well. These swords have all a length. I am a good lord. Set me the stoops of wine upon that table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, let all the battlements their ordnance fire. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath. And in the cup a jewel shall he throw. Richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cup. And let the kettle to the trumpet speak. The trumpet to the cannoneer without. The cannons to the heavens. The heavens to earth. Now the king speaks to Hamlet. Judge 
judges, bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. a very palpable hit. Well, again. Hey. Give me drink. Hamlet, this pearl is thine. Hooray! Here's to thy health. Give him the cup. I'll play this pouch first. Set it by a while. Come. Say you? A touch, a touch, I do confess. Our son shall win. His heart and scan to breath. Here, Hamlet, take my napkin, rub thy brows. Good God, you do not drink! I will, my lord, I pray you pardon. <laughs> the queen carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Good, madam. My lord, I'll hit him now. I do not think it. It is almost against my conscience. Let me wipe thy face. Come for the third Laertes, you do but deli. I pray you pass with your best violence. I'm afeard you'll make a wonder of me. Say you so. Come on. Either way.
and live in sense. Stay. Come again. Justly killed with my own treachery. How is it, my lord? How does the queen? You swoon to see them bleed. No. No. The drink. The drink. Oh, my dear. Oh, let the door be locked! Treasury! Seek his out! Here, Hamlet! Hamlet, thou art slain. In thee there is not half an hour of life. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbaited and envenomed. The foul practice hath turned itself on me. Lo, here I lie, never to rise again. Thy mother's poison. I can no more. The king. The king's to blame. The point and venom, too. Then venom to thy mother! Forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am dead, Horatio. Wretched queen. Adieu. You that look pale and tremble at this charge, that are but mutes or audience to this act, had I but time, as this fell sergeant death is strict in his arrest, oh, I could tell you, but let it be. I die, Horatio. The potent poison quite o'ergrows my spirit.
if thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity of life. And in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. The rest is silent. Let four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stake. For he was likely, had he been put on, to have proved most royal. And for his passage, the soldier's music and the rights of war speak loudly for him. Go, bid the soldiers shoot. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. <laughs>